we're going to bring the meeting to order. It is on top of the hour. Are there any uh, additions or changes to the agenda as presented? Uh, Doug, I believe you've got some. Yeah, I have one. I would like to uh, have uh, in executive session a uh, to discuss the possibility of a pledge contract with regard to the Johnson Trailhead for construction and improvements on it. Okay. And, and there were, I'm going to invite, to, I, I'm going to request that we invite four people to that. Uh, which would be Duncan Hastings because the Historical Society be involved in that. Howard Romero, the designer and estimator. Brian Story and Rosemary because money. <laughs> yes, we need Which Rosemary. I hope would be none, but. Uh, okay, uh, anyone got anything else? Seeing none. I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session for the interview of Public Works. I move we go into executive session to interview Public Works Supervisor Road Foreman candidates as allowed by 1 VSA 313A3. And inviting Brian as well as the candidates. That's correct. Do we have a second? Second. Got okay, a motion and a second. Do we have any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, welcome back. I would entertain a motion to offer a, a, a employment employment offer. Okay, I will make the motion that we authorize Brian Story to make an offer of employment to Hugh Albright for the position of Public Works Supervisor upon um, clean background check and, and reference checks. We have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Doug. Motion, motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. As the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of November 16th and the 23rd. Can I, can I um, suggest that we we look at the, the, two, the minutes separately because I have some suggestions. Okay. Let's take up the November 16th first. Is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of November 16th? That I am willing to move. Okay, motion, do we have a second? Second. Second, we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? If there's no board discussion. I've got a comment from a member of the public. Okay, go ahead. All right, Diana, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to clarify um, that when I spoke that you know, in the minutes I'm identified as an EMS provider from Morristown, that I was speaking strictly as a resident of Johnson. I wasn't representing the town of Morristown in any way in that conversation. Okay, so noted. Good. Thank you for catching that, Diana. I had missed that it was in the minutes. And then um, I also wanted to just refer to the mutual aid conversation because um, I, I think it's a really slippery slope when we start editing minutes to change them to be what we wish we'd said instead of what we actually said. And so I just wanted to somehow clarify that my intent was not to complain about the mutual aid situation in any way whatsoever, but rather as a provider in Morristown, who's aware and concerned of the general state of EMS in Vermont, that I was using that as some examples of the kinds of things that the town might want to explore in making decisions about EMS, but not presenting um, it as a problem or a complaint in any way. Okay, thank you. And I'm sure Donner picked up on 
if the board wants to have the any changes made to the meeting minutes due to some feedback from Diana. At full disclosure, I was not here at that meeting, so I will recuse myself from voting or participating in the discussion of the meeting minutes. Yeah, I was, uh, this is Doug, I was the uh, acting chair that night, and, and I understood, Diana, when you were speaking, that you were a Johnson resident, and that, but that you worked for Morrisville EMS, but you were not representing them. You were speaking from your position here in Johnson. And I also understood that you were intending to, uh, you know, give your insight and not complain, you know. Good, I'm glad it was perceived that way. Yes, yes, with me too. You know, that's exactly how I perceived it as well. How did the video sound to it? I didn't look at the video. I just looked, was reading the minutes online and I thought, ooh, that maybe sounds a little bit more judgmental than um, I wanted it to sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other discussion? So in this case, when we get feedback like this, Eric, what do we do with it? Do we, so, uh, um, I guess, I guess, Diana, are you, are, are you suggesting um, a change or just you wanted to clarify with us? Um, hearing your feedback that you perceived it the way I intended it to makes me feel that the minutes don't necessarily need to be altered with the exception of where it says Diana Osborne, EMS provider in Morristown, um, and also resident of Johnson speaking strictly on her own behalf or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that I would, I would feel comfortable with that, just adding a line in there that I'm, I'm speaking as a citizen and I'm not representing Morristown in any way. Okay, so can we make a friendly amendment to add that, um, Eric? If the board uh, a member wants to do that, yes. I'll accept an amendment. In, uh, Mike? In the past, haven't we just uh, included that in our current minutes? Uh, I think it would have a lot to do with what the the video uh, intimated, actually. We could make that as part of this meeting, some clarif clarifying remarks on a previous meeting minutes. Uh, the board can amend the meeting minutes if there's some clerical issues. Um, or we could let it stand because of the impression it seemed to be from all the board members that uh, Diana's intent was how it was perceived. Brian, you want to say something? Uh, just a quick note. Um, I, I think we, we kind of divide this into two, that Diana has offered some additional clarifying statements, which would, my, it, to Mike's point, that wouldn't be something we would edit into a previous set of minutes. But Diana's request of, you know, clarifying a little bit that she was, that she's a Johnson resident first, I don't think changes anything about the the characterization of the time. It just, you know, I think helps Diana feel comfortable with her statements from from that. Mike, well, you know, I, I think it's all well and good, uh, but here I am a, a select board member, and in the past I have uh, brought forth uh, similar things, and the board wasn't willing to actually edit the minutes, but they were more than willing to put a clarification in the current meeting minutes. So I think if it's done for one, it should be done for all. Or to go back and uh, revisit the actual video uh, and, and possibly make changes there. I'm not trying to make a, you know, put a wrench in the works here. I just want to see things uh, done the same from meeting to meeting. Okay, duly noted. If there's no amendment offered. The table, the... Well, this discussion is already gonna be in our current meeting minutes. 
Um, so I guess the question for the board is, do you want to change anything with the meeting minutes of November 16th? I generally favor the approach of, of um, not going back, but of cleaning it up in the current meeting minutes, the meeting minutes of the December 7th. Unless there's something that was just factually wrong about the, and I don't think it is about being factually wrong, it's just about clarifying. But I think if somebody said, you know, that the, their preferred title was one thing, you know, that Diana pre would prefer to be identified as a Johnson resident mm -hmm. as her mm -hmm. kind of primary purpose for being there. Do you want to, that, that would be the amendment to the, or the proposed change to the, to the minutes? If you wanted to change the change the minutes, that would be my, my recommendation is that you do something along those lines because you're not trying to change the character of what she said or the content of what she said. Okay, let's do that. Um, yeah. Is that a friendly amendment to the motioner and the seconder? Who seconded it? I think did Doug I? did. Doug did. Fine. Okay, yeah. so that's a friendly amendment to the motion and the seconder. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. And we had a. I think I. Okay, we need to take a roll call because it was not unanimous. So, Carl, how do you vote? Yes. Doug, how do you vote? Yes. Nat, how do you vote? Yes. Mike, how do you vote? Nay. And the chair recuses himself because he was not at the meeting. The motion passes. Okay, uh, and the second one is the November 23rd meeting minutes. Right, so this was our joint meeting. Um, and I did go back and look at the video on this. Um, and I had written Donna to ask her if she could add some things to these minutes that were not included, um, not changing any wording or characterization, but just adding um, pieces of the meeting that I felt really important, A, for content and B, for, well, in transparency and um, for context for other things that were included. Um, and her recommendation to me was to um, come to you Come, you know, bring it up at the meeting. She couldn't do that um, on her. So, do we want so to put the to be do we want to put the meeting minutes on okay. the floor first, and then uh, make the motion to to add or or change or modify, or do you want to make that part of your motion? I would. I would like to make a motion. Okay. Can I make a motion to with my specific requests? Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, okay, thank you. So I move that um, that from hour one, minute 51 <laughs> in the video, um, which is the part of the meeting where we were talking about the merger study, um, where um, Gordy Smith, the chair of the trustees, lists all the things um, that the town can take on if, if we theoretically um, took on a village, um, village uh, general department responsibilities, um, that that entire uh, list of things that he mentions is added to, to the minutes there. Um, and then again at our 20, minute 22, between minute 22 and 28, that time frame, um, I would like it to be included that, um, that while Rick Opperly, a, a, um, a constituent who was giving public comment was speaking that, um, that uh, trustee Will Jennison left his camera for the entire time and didn't come back on until the vote came. And, um, and that 
after the vote was taken, when I um, questioned him on that, um, that then after that, uh, Gordy Smith um, said that I was getting personal and I would like that to be reflected in the minutes. Um, as well as the discussion around uh, Jasmine, be Jasmine Uris being denied access to speak. So anyway, there's just a lot of the meeting that was not included that I think is really, really important for, um, like I said, um, transparency oh. and-, and um, Can you summarize what your motion I, would be? Okay. <laughs> so my motion is that, um, that from, from, from hour one minute 51, that, th that uh, Gordy's list of things that the town can take on be included in the minutes, verbatim. Okay. And what was the second part that you and then from hour two, minute 22, to hour two, minute 28, it is included that, um, that one of the trustees, Will Jensen, had left the camera for the entire six minutes that Rick Opperly was speaking. The one and only public comment that was really pertinent to that vote. Okay, so as I am interpreting the motion, the motion is to approve the meeting minutes of the 23rd. However, having a verbatim on the one hour, 51 minute for Gordy's discussion and on the second hour, 22 to 28 uh, with the Will Jennison's um, or the uh, Rick Uppley's uh, what he provided for statement. Is there a second for this motion? I understood Kyle when she was just describing this, wanting to include um, the uh, Gordy statement. At the uh, it, first yeah. part. No, yes. no, no, the Gordy statement uh, about how he characterized Kyle's inquiry yes and that would be the verbatim no second part. that's actually the first the first part the verbatim part uh, list of things that the town would have to take over that's the first part of the meeting that i would like to have included verbatim and then the second piece that i would like to be included is um is that in the hour two around 228 when right now the way that the minutes are, are written, um, it just says that um, it doesn't give any context for why I asked Will why he walked away from the camera. It just says, Kyle asked if she could ask why Will walked away from the camera while Rick was speaking. Will said no. Kyle said she thinks that was rude. And I would really like some context before and then what was said afterwards to be in the minutes which is when Gordy said that I was getting personal. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> if we have a motion on the floor uh, and it's hopefully- I'm we sorry, can it's hard. It. Because it's hard to <laughs> describe all that in, in a motion, but it's is there big swaths. Is there a second for that motion? Lacking a second, the motion would die and I would, and we have no second, so the motion dies. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the 23rd? So move. We do have a motion, do we have a second? Lacking a second, the motion will die. I'll, 
I'll take a stab at this. I would move the meeting minutes with the inclusion of the verbatim list of. So uh, you're not seconding Mike's. I'm not seconding Mike. Okay. Mike's. Mike's motion dies. Now Doug has the floor to make a motion. Yeah, I would move the minutes with the incorporating Kyle's first stated request that Gordy's list of the verbatim be included. Motion, do we have a second? What was that list? I mean, it must've been about five things. I mean, it wasn't more than that, correct? Um, it was, it was at least five things. I think it was a little bit more, but it also included um, a statement that, um, sorry, let me just pull where I was back up. Um, one of the things he listed is that when he was listing his things, he said, you can argue about the BLM flag instead of us. And then later on, he would, he said that he would, he would fight to keep control of the electrical department and the fire department. Yeah, that's Doug's motion to cover all of that. Yep. Do we have a second? So state your, state your motion again, please, Doug. My, my motion is to approve the minutes with incorporating only the, the first section that Kyle was talking about. Um, okay, I second that. We have a mo motion and we have a second. Any discussion? Um, I, Donna Wood has a comment. Okay, uh, let's, any board members got any discussion first? Seeing none, okay, yeah, go ahead, put Donna on. Okay, Donna. It, actually, my thing was already covered by Doug like five minutes ago, so oh, okay. I'm fine. Okay, thank you, Donna. Um, can I just say that if if we go through with this motion that, um, and if we do not, uh, we're not, it sounds like going to include the, the part at the, more towards the end of the meeting, um, when, when Will uh, left the camera, um, and then didn't come back on until 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 the vote was taken. And then when I asked why he did that, because to me that just felt so disrespectful. Um, I also just want to say that, um, and when he said no, um, that Eric, you also gave a, like a big belly laugh, and it was it just felt like we were like we were watching a um, reality TV show and not taking um, our, you know, responsibility as, as public servants seriously. And, um, and it's, this is not about me, this is about how we're treating our, our taxpayers and our constituents. So I just really want that to be very clear that we all have to really check ourselves there. Okay. And, leaders. I'll have a, I, I would like to make a statement after we have a vote. Okay. Mike. First off, Kyle, uh, what business was it of yours to even ask him? I mean, he could have said uh, he, he took a defecation for crying out loud. Would you have wanted to hear that? Really? Uh, it, it's none of your business where, what he did or where he went. You're taking a stretch here to insinuate that he was disrespectful. You could easily argue that you were disrespectful by grilling him on where he went. Um, well, I felt like it was, it, 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 if you look back at the video, it looks very intentional. He looks like, oh, I don't wanna hear this. He gives kind of a, uh, he, he lets out a sigh, he walks up, he leaves. Um, and then he actually does come back into the screen around minute three of being away. And he's sort of rooting around in the refrigerator, taking his time coming back on. And then when it comes to vote, he sits back down. It felt, 
it did feel very deliberate and of all the times to leave in go to the bathroom or do whatever you need to do when there's some really important public comment if you are someone who truly serves the people um you you hold your urine or whatever for another two minutes to hear it um it just it and it's, it's um, this is a pattern of behavior to Mike. Um, and I think it needs to be called out. Well, for one thing, he could still hear the whole meeting. It, and that, number two is Rick Opperly never shows his face. I mean, he has, uh, I'm sure he has um, a Comcast in the village. He doesn't have any problem with the bandwidth, but he never shows his face. He could easily argue that uh, he's being disrespectful by not showing his face. So, you know, we're getting into some real muddy water here, uh, Kyle. He's so, our, you know, I don't think we should even be talking about Will or what he did or what he didn't do. None go of this ahead. Is go ahead, Nat. None of this is germane to the motion on the floor. And I would uh, accept that from Nat. Okay. We are. I can agree to that. The motion was the, uh, the section where. Gordy uh, mentioned the town village merger. Is there any more discussion on this motion to approve the meetings with that verbatim addition? Not seeing any, all of those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Okay, we'll do it by roll call. Nat, how do you vote? Aye. Kyle, uh, Kyle how do you vote? Aye. Doug, how do you vote? Aye. Oppose that? Aye. All right. Mike, how do you vote? Nay. Nay. The motion passes. Move on. Okay. Uh, should go into Treasurer's report. Rosemary, is she? Yeah, she's here. All right. You'll have to unmute yourself, Rosemary. Okay, I don't have too much tonight. Um, just wondering about um, the annual holiday pay. If the if the town is going to make their annual hundred dollars payment to the town employees, it's the board's pleasure. So moved. So moved. Second. There, second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Um, I was trying to say something during okay. the discussion. Go ahead. Is that uh, in the past we've done a hundred dollars for each employee? Yes. Okay. Full full time employees. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to the vote now. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. Go ahead, Rosemary. And. Uh, the digitization of the land records should be online in about two weeks. It should be no later than two weeks. And then we'll have 40 years online. Wow, nice. And we just, um, Eric needs to come in and sign the warrant. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. Motion to authorize the chair to sign the warrants. Is there a second? Second. second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, Rosemary, thank you for getting those out a little bit earlier today, or Anne. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Question. I also have your um question. Also have your, oh, okay. Just question, Rosemary, on it. Uh why are we paying for a Jeffersonville dog? For who? I don't know. It's uh, the bill in there, a, a dog for Jeff. I'll have to look at it. Okay. Any other discussion? Jeff dog, twenty dollars in wild kennel. I think the dog is named Jeff. No, I'm, I'm goofing around. I'm well, sorry. maybe that's it. I uh, I took it to mean a Jeff. <laughs> Okay, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Anything else, Rosemary? 
You're going to be talking about town meeting tonight? Yes. Um, yeah, I might have some right. information regarding that. Okay, good. Uh, unless anybody's got any questions for Rosemary, we'll move on. I see Charlie on. I'm guessing he's going to give us a planning commission report. Okay, Charlie, you'll have to unmute. There you go. I did. You're there. We hear so, you. Good. I really don't have anything to report. It was my understanding that you folks were going to look at what we submitted and redline it and give it back to us tonight. Our recommendations, you were unhappy with them for various reasons. And um, you said you're going to redline it and give it back to us. So I'm waiting. The only, thing, only comment I had, Doug was concerned about uh, hydrologically connected portions of the class four roads. And my understanding from the select board meeting previously was that uh, LCP told you what was and what wasn't logically connected. So why do you want us to duplicate their effort? Doug, do you care to? Well, um, we thought, well, what I thought was that uh, to the extent that uh, uh, a town highway that's class four was not hydrologically connected, we probably ought to leave it alone because there was no financial incentive uh, that we didn't have previous to this uh, latest rule. And we've had this uh, to, to, to change it. You know, I see Kim looks, Kim looks amazed, you know, I, I guess where I thought you were yeah, off. I'm as amazed as she is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing in, I, I didn't read that in your instructions that if it's hydrologic, if it's not hydrologically connected, ignore it. I mean, we went through and we have a list of what we think you ought to do with some of the roads. Now, I will tell you that after inspecting the roads and Diana is here, or was here, we think that uh, rather than downgrade as many, or downgrade as many as we suggested, however, a portion of Prospect Road will be upgraded from class four to three. And that would be the same from where it ends as a class three to uh, Diana and her neighbor's driveway because it's heavily used and it's in um, poor shape for a very small portion of the year, but it is during that brief period of time in the spring in mud, it's impassable. And the neighbors do, the, the, uh, the property owners that pay tax on that class four road maintain it at this time uh, as best they can, but the, that's just one area where they, um, it's beyond their ability to maintain. So would they, would they throw up all these other class or if we convert these other class four roads to trails. Go ahead. Well, no, I interrupted you, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, damn. We have a, we have yeah, a, policy, we have a policy on how you bring a class four road up to class three. Fine, we'll go that route. No, not a problem. Kim might have been speaking, but she's moving. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask Kim to unmute. Go ahead, Kim. Yeah, I I just was wondering if any of the board had actually looked at the recommendations that um, were put out a while back and and what they thought about the class four roads that had been recommended to change into trails. I, go ahead, Doug. 
I read them all. And when I had the first half of the report, I thought you were right on. As I, it's a long time ago. When I got the second half, I couldn't believe how far off I thought you were. Be because you missed hydrologic. Well, you know, Doug, you said it. But it's your it's your report, right? So so we'll have to consider what your report is. And and Charlie said we're we probably said we'll you know redline it whatever. We haven't done it, but uh, I would assume that uh, at some point we'll find time to get to put that back to you. I know we've been uh, kicking this down the, the the can down the road for a while, but. Uh, Personally, I find it difficult to try to go through this document while we're meeting in this Zoom concept. Um, is it something the board would want to push out until we're able to meet in person again? Because I think it's a to go through that document and go road by road, it's going to require us to really have it in front of us and looking at it. And, I find a lot of difficulty in trying to do that in this setting. But it does mean it goes kicked down the road for however long. Kim? I guess another question was- I don't think that's a- The information that we heard from Rob Moore was never handed. I don't know, Charlie, I don't know if you got it, but I assume that after saying that that was pretty, it, information that was very necessary to the, the process. Basically, it was the process that we were assigned to do the second time around with, uh, 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 you know, taking into consideration the hydrological impacts on the roads. And I didn't hear, I didn't receive any information or forwarded um, any of the data that was collected on that. So I don't know how important that is, but it, it seems like if you want us to incorporate that, that would be good information to have. And I also had a question for either Charlie or Brian, if there was any kind of meeting happening tomorrow, I believe that's our usual meeting date. Thank you. Uh, no. no, our usual meeting date was last Tuesday. And I sent out an email that we weren't having it. Our usual meeting date is the first Tuesday of the month. Okay. And that was last day. And we, we were to have a meeting, but given that I was waiting more information from the select board, I decided to wait until after I received it. Mm -hmm. So no, the short answer is no, okay. we're not meeting. And I would agree with that, that, you know, this can be, this can be delayed until after we can meet in person, because frankly, the planning commission likes to prefers to meet in person. And we were able to do that when the weather was nice. Uh, I don't see any hurry. We have until what year to be in compliance? 2026 or 2036, Brian? <laughs> We have, I think it's 2024. Uh, we have to have, we have to be in compliance for roads with a slope greater than 10%. Uh, that's the date that we're, our kind of, our next date. And I believe it's, it might even be as late as 2030 before we have to be in full compliance. I won't be worried about that. Kim thinks I'm wrong on the dates. Oh, no, no, no. I, I just, I, I wanted to ask, um, because it sounds like that's not a big issue. One of the things that I, I feel pretty strongly that, that I'm hoping that you guys pass along what we need to do as a community is for what's happening at NVU Johnson and having um, proactive um, brainstorming sessions on with the select board, with the trustees, with the planning commission, with anybody, um, with Beth is on, I think still, people, um, if any information can be um, gathered, sifted through ideas, I just feel like that's looming for me much more in, in the forefront than the class four road issue. I'd have to agree with you, uh, Kim. Scary. 
So um, go ahead. I'm reading the implementation. Nat, I'm reading the implementation yeah. schedule. Nat, why don't and, you uh, get the floor? Nothing's really required before 2028. <laughs> okay, thank you, Charlie. What did Nat, he say? 2028? 2024. 2024. Nat, go ahead. No, 2028. All right, okay. <laughs> put him on mute. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I, I asked him because I wanted to know. <laughs> um, uh, a, a few uh, a few remarks. Yes, uh, did read the report, and and as I think we stated when it first came out, I, I, impressed with the amount of work uh, and in that that went into it on the planning commission's part. I think shortly, my recollection of it is that shortly after the planning commission uh, put that report out. Uh, LCPC and um, uh, LCPC released the results of their survey about hydrologically co co uh, connected roadways. Um, and it's, I think, my recollection of the conversation that we had was really had a strong impression that that report would have some bearing on um, the roads, uh, class four or otherwise, that we might decide to reclassify. So I think that's what we—that's what my understanding of it was. That the the impression I'm kind of getting from the planning commission now is, you're happy with your report how it is, and if that's the case, then that's the case. Um, it's it's in the board's hands now. And my 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 final conclusion with it is that that list of of class four roads that you suggested reclassifying or throwing up. I think you didn't really suggest we throw anything up actually, but um, was pretty extensive and really requires um, that we look road by road by road at each piece. And it would, it's gonna take some time to do that, but I'm not really, so much work has been done on this. I don't wanna just kick it down the road to some select board and planning commission five years from now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, does the board want to take any action on this tonight? We can't really. So what are the what are the marching orders here? So Kim said that she the planning commission needs the Rob Moore information, correct? Brian, is that something you've got in your possession? I can put the planning commission in touch with Rob and try and facilitate there that uh, whatever you need from, from Rob, I know that he'd be happy to provide. Charlie, you've got your hand up. Charlie? Yeah, we have the information and it was distributed to all members. Okay. Maybe it hasn't been read, but it's been distributed. Wait to your to your board members, I mean to your committee members. Yes, I didn't get it. Yes. Early, but... Oh, and so the plan. Sam? I left it with um, Scott. <laughs> okay. When when Rob was on the last time, I queried him on on. We had his we had his report, but it was hard to figure out by the number which the sections were. And I think it, it, it's, only when, it's only when the planning can, commission can put the, the sections what, that, that they use in the report on the ground that this will be useful to them. Well I, taken. Yeah, I suspect that's gonna be true that um, yeah, a lot of Rob's information is right out of the road database that you know, it's not easy to read and place on a map. Right. I, yeah, you, the materials from last board meeting, that was an excellent uh, presentation, you know, the color code connected, not connected, but where specific, where actually those pieces were. I think, I think the point, Doug, we, we need to meld those and I don't know that the planning commission has the mapping capability that uh, LCPC does with GIS and all. 
high tech things. Yeah. I also don't have enough broad, I don't have enough bandwidth at home to do it. Well, I, I think that we have to somehow get the information translated so it's usable. I would, I would, I would kick that to LCPC to make us a map. Mm -hmm. We pay them. I, I believe State that's going to be part of the final report, uh, which was not ready for tonight's meeting, but should be at our, our next board meeting. This would be LCPC's meeting or report. Uh, LCPC's report at our next meeting. Can, can you verify that with Rob, that, that that would be the work product? Yeah, I'll make sure that there's going to be a map included with that. Uh, of all road segments is, is the question. There is a map of uh, the road segments that are majorly out of compliance. Right. Uh, but I'll make sure that the map includes all road segments and their status. Okay. Okay. Um, are we complete with the planning commission? Kim was waving her hand. What's that? Kim was waving her hand. Okay. I think she's just waving to us. <laughs> okay. no, I, I was actually saying the class four roads were our major concern. That was our assignment. So it wouldn't need to be all roads, but it, if the data was, the map was put out for class four specifically, that would I think do it for us. It, it, it might be worth it to try and coordinate a little bit with Rob uh, to try and focus in on what's relevant for you rather than everything. Charlie, do you have me, uh, uh, like the ability to communicate with Rob? Do you have his email phone number? I can get it. It's not difficult. Okay. Thanks. You is that it. is that my my assignment or, or is that Brian's assignment? I guess I'm not clear. Oh, I've got his email address, so I'll put you two in touch. But you also don't need to. What? It, it's just a roadblock if every question has to go through me. So yeah, please feel free to talk to Rob on your own. All right. Okay. Not a problem. Moving on into the administrator's report, just for everyone's awareness, we're about 15 minutes behind schedule. If we follow the rest of the agenda as uh, slotted, it will put us at quarter after 10, and that doesn't count the uh, new addition that uh, Doug went and added. So we may wanna look at items that we can skip over, or we're gonna have to start putting the pedal down. First uh, item, the planning modification for town meeting. I don't know if Rosemary had new things to add to that. Yeah, I, I'm interested in Rosemary's comments on this. Uh, I think we might duplicate some of what we're saying. So Rosemary, are you there? Yep. I was just wondering if the town was going to want to use a tabulator and associated cost with that. Well, that's a discussion for tonight on the first part is, do we want to do the Australian ballot for town meeting? It's not a decision we have to make tonight, uh, but it is something we need to start thinking about. We would need to make that decision within a month or so. I did uh, just see on the news tonight that some communities are exploring the option of delaying their town meeting until the weather is good and they'd be able to help uh, have it held outside somewhere. Oh um, yeah, that sounds so that, like a deal. That may be something we want to. That would we'd have a month to look into this and think about it. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, there, there's uh, the Act One Sixty Two that I gave you the text for, uh, and there is currently more debate going on about further modifications to town meeting. Uh, that might be passed. Mm -hmm. So right now our option is going to Australian ballot, um, voting on our regular town meeting day, 
and having an informational meeting in advance of that. But yeah, there, there are more modifications that may be allowed. And historically, informational meetings are not well attended. Um, and anything we put forward on Australian ballot, it would not be the ability to explain or have a back and forth with the voters or their ability to amend what we're doing. Um, it would be simply an up or down vote. So there are benefits to having an in-person meeting if it's possible, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. I think we should just, well, I feel that we should just make a decision that that's not going to happen, that we're not going to meet in person indoors on the first week of March, as we always do. I think that's a safe. And being outdoors, even if we delayed it, I mean, we can't delay it too much because of practical considerations, um, weather conditions are in Vermont in the springtime, even in the summertime, aren't really conducive to planning town meetings outdoors unless we have tent space or something. Definitely. With sides. <laughs> Doug? Well, my theory would be that uh, I don't trust the outdoors either. Because people walk up to you, they greet you, 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 can't, you can't trust. It would be hard to resist old friends, you know, and greeting them. Oh, so I, we might want to see what what comes down the road. The one thing I think we might want to address is uh, is well, the uh, necessity of uh, candidates uh, uh, getting signatures. They don't need signatures. That was part of the law. Right. We do not have to adopt that. No, nope, that's okay. they made that exception for okay. at least in twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they did not make a modification for petitions. True. So if the board wants to do anything about, you know, petitions, um, you know, we don't have to do anything in advance now, uh, but yeah, uh, for, for non-action items uh, for town meeting, there, there isn't any uh, provision for that. But that's also a very different atmosphere when we're not meeting in person. Okay. Are we going to go back to Rosemary's question about the tabulator? Well, the decision with having the tabulator would be contingent upon do we have the Australian ballot? Right. Which so. is on whether we have it have town meeting not not have town meeting basically right or or delay it i like to brian's point uh, the legislature are looking at other changes so there could be value in us not making that decision tonight yeah true i think we should maybe hold off a little bit but they it's, get it. it's something to think about the tabulator costs twenty five hundred dollars. Is that true, Rosemary? Probably at least fifteen hundred dollars. Then you have to uh, buy special ballots, which would probably be another thousand so dollars. So we're, we're talking twenty five hundred dollars. Um, we had uh, no problem uh, during the general election uh, counting ballots. Uh, I don't even think we should spend money on a tabulator even if we get to that point. Good point. We can discuss that. So the Australian ballot would be a, would be a mail-in like what we did with the general election? Mail-in or deliver. They could vote in person on the day. Of. Oh, OK. Okay, any other comments? I'm sure we will be revisiting this. Yep. Okay, animal control compensation. All right, so I surveyed our neighbors and looked at the statewide 
uh, compensation and benefits bank package survey. Um, statewide one was a little hard to calculate because it didn't really fit in with their data collection model. So it was more useful for our neighbors. Um, some of our neighbors have it as a staff position. Uh, some pay, the, it, there's no consistency. No, but I don't think any two towns in Lamoille uh, are paying the same amount. Um, but we are paying the least. Uh, so uh, uh, Tracy has requested that we consider increasing it a little bit. Um, so my recommendation was to increase the stipend from 500 to $750 annually. Rosemary, do you know when that last time it was raised? Are we talking about animal or health officer? Uh, just health officer in this. Uh, sorry, I, I looked at animal control also and found that our animal control was in line. You know, our animal control isn't really out of line. And that was not Tracy's request either. Uh, Tracy was in particular concerned about the town health officer that the amount of time she was spending on that she didn't feel was co well compensated by the stipend. Um, the animal control, we're, we pay about the same as everybody else. It's been many years since you looked at the health officer pay. Yeah, I'm almost thinking that Rocky Hooper was the health officer and he got 500 bucks and that was 20 years ago. <laughs> and yeah. if we uh, give them 750, we probably won't adjust it for another 30, 40 years. <laughs> Maybe we ought to just double it right to a thousand. Is there any other compensation for the health officer when they go out? Is there a hourly charge or a, you know incident charge a badge mileage no. i move that we uh pay her a thousand bucks second a motion is second for the compensation of the health officer any other discussion uh is this going to be for both health officers or for the uh chief health officer and a different amount for deputy health officers this is chief. Chief gets a thousand. Deputy still gets five hundred, or def deputy gets a different amount. What is Six. the difference in their roles? Uh, officially, there's a little bit of a difference, but in practice, there's virtually none. So, if a call comes in, it goes to the chief first. Goes to the chief first, uh, and then goes out from there. Okay. But they both have the same authority and the same uh, the same duties on on our end. the The chief doesn't do anything special for us. They're just listed as the chief on the state's website. So basically, the chief is the first call. Yeah. Okay. They currently get five hundred apiece, right? They do. I, I would change yeah. mine to a thousand for the primary, seven fifty to for the secondary. Second. I'll accept that. Okay, friendly amendment for the motioner and the seconder. Any other discussion? Uh, we've got a comment from the public if we're... Yep, go ahead. Okay, Diana, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Okay, go ahead. Um, I certainly don't wanna do anything to prolong this, but I just wanted to ask a brief question, which is, is there workload affected by the pandemic? Uh, Somewhat. Uh, we are doing as much as we possibly can, but, um, well, for one thing, uh, we can't get a training scheduled. Uh, we, so we are really only have one health officer at the time because we can't get our deputy health officer trained uh, to go out and, and take action. Uh, because there, there have been no available in-person trainings. Um, and yeah, the, their workload is complicated by this. Uh, you know, we, we've managed so far, but uh, I think that we are benefiting from our current uh, chief health officer being involved in, in EMS. 
and having a great deal of experience. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Compensation benefits town employees. You also provided us something there too. Yep. So the impact of salary changes, um, you know, preparing that kind of how the, the board had requested after our joint meeting, uh, are in describing the, the budget impact of a couple different scenarios. Uh, if you recall, we chose the 2% for uh, uh, joint employees. I would say uh, uh, town clerk and, and assistant town clerk. And if, if memory serves me correct, we did 2% and we dropped their cost of health care uh, employer benefit to 90. Was that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Anybody got anything they'd like to bring up about this? Well, this isn't uh, really, I mean, it, it ties in with our community uh, on how we pay for things. But we've all read that the state is approximately $40 million short in the education fund. And guess what? The state is gonna pass that on to property owners in a tune of approximately 9%. So there's more burdens going on homeowners in Johnson uh, because of a shortfall in the education. And um, other people in the community are tightening their belts um, and they have expenses too. And a lot of people do not have the same type of uh, health care that our employees do. Uh, like I said last meeting when we had our joint meeting, I'm not trying to say anything you know, detrimental about our employees. I, I appreciate all they do uh, and all of the good work they do for the town, but they do have the Cadillac uh, of healthcare and pay very, very little uh, toward it. Uh, a lot of people in the community uh, have jobs that they pay a tremendous amount of money uh, for healthcare. And so we need to be cognizant of the fact of our community and those who live in it on what they can pay and what we're expecting them to pay. Nope taken. I'm unclear. Uh, we had this discussion at the, the joint meeting. This says in the administrator's report, uh, decisions need to be made, decisions regarding the intercom station adjustments. What, what decisions need to be made specifically? Uh, at the joint meeting, it was, we made the assignment for the uh, oh. jointly paid employees, which is the town clerk and the assistant town clerk. Thank you. I, I understand now. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, we had expressed an interest in sharing the same for the rest of the town employees, but we have not actually voted on that. Okay. And the cost of living, the COLA was? Uh, about 1.4%. 1.4. And we gave the officers, joint officers, 2% uh, because we cut their, uh, our contributions to the insurance. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, and Brian, historically, we've we've tried to do this, you know, do the same, um, the same uh, rate. As long as I've been here, yes. we, we've had the same rate. Yes. Okay. Uh, the uh, <laughs> highway employees or the, the public works employees are also subject to our uh, rates and benefits package that uh, awards skills and longevity and, and a couple other uh, categories, right. but um, 
Okay. Yeah, so that, that that is indeed one to one comparison with them, but uh, this is mostly the case. Mm -hmm. But I guess to Kyle's point, uh, there is nothing that holds the board to the 2% or dropping to 90%. We could keep the health benefits at 91 and we could give a 5% increase. Um, it's totally our within our purview on all of our town employees. But to your point, yes, we have tried to be consistent. It seems like that uh, it would help with, yeah, employees feeling that they're on the same. <laughs> Um, so I would, yeah, I'm. I would, I would like to keep it that way. I would, I would move that we give them a two percent salary increase um, and ninety percent cover ninety percent of the health care. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Mike. I move we don't do a thing until we find out whether or not we have a bargaining unit in the town of Johnson. I think at this point, because of the timing, we have to assume that there is no bargaining going on and treat them like regular employees. Well, this has been hanging over our head how many months now? What's that? That they joined the union. Yeah, been close to a year. Right, so. So I guess it's pretty safe to assume they're not taking action on it. Right. Well, I, I don't like it the way it is and, and I don't wanna uh, be giving away the farm uh, for no good reason. Um, the village negotiated a contract uh, and it's the village crew uh, actually has a different contract uh, than the shared employees. So there's yep. a difference between their village employees and the shared employees. So uh, I, I would move that we, we there's table already, this. There's already a motion. That's true. I understand, yeah. Bad choice of words. Yeah, you can only vote it down. I know, getting okay. ahead of myself. Any other discussion? We have motion on table for 2% pay increase that would uh, capture everyone in the town office uh, that wasn't captured by the joint officers positions and the public works, as well as those same folks for their health care benefits, we would cover 90% of the increase. Um, not uh, no, of the not increase, the increase, 90% of the cost. Yes, I'm yes. sorry, stand to correct it. Any other discussion? Are we prepared to vote? Mike? Yes. We still need to look into what I mentioned last meeting, uh, a different funding apparatus for our healthcare. Uh, so I hope this just doesn't get uh, swept under the carpet after this vote this evening. We need to look into some ways to save ourselves some money uh, as far as our healthcare goes. And whether it be to self fund some of it and give uh, a less of a plan and make up the difference, uh, we need to be sharpening our pencil here. Mm -hmm. Duly noted. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. We'll do a roll call. Nat, how do you vote? Yes. Doug, how do you vote? Yes. Kyle, how do you vote? Yes. Mike, how do you vote? No. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, next item is I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss employee evaluation. So we go into executive session to discuss employee evaluation as allowed by 1 VSA 313A3. We have motion, do we have second? Second. 
Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, for everyone on the Zoom call, we'll be going into executive session for this employee evaluation, and then we will come out briefly and go back in probably for an executive session on trailhead uh, proposal. And there may or may not be some action after that. So if you want to stick around, we will be coming out in a few minutes, 15 minutes probably. Oh. See you later. Has a question, I think. No, she was waving. Oh, waving good night. Okay. Good night, Beth. So were we gonna? Were we expecting Duncan and Howard? Yeah, we're supposed to call them because it, the time was not specifically set. Okay, are you, are you calling them? I can. Um, should we move? We go into executive session, and then we'll. Which do you want to do first? Well, why don't you uh, make the motion inviting? those people to participate and then we'll call them. Okay, I would move that we go into executive session inviting Howard Romero, Brian Story, Duncan Hastings, and Rosemary Autobert for the purposes of negotiating a contract for the naming rights and improvements to the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail Trailhead Building in Johnson, premature disclosure of which would disadvantage the town as allowed by one BSA section 1313A1. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion is second, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Show us in executive session at 10 o'clock. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I would entertain a motion to uh, accept the pledge for the trailhead. So Doug, I have something written down here, but did you want to did you want to make a motion? No. I would like you to. All right, I would like to um, first of all thank Doug for all of his work on this project to date. It's exciting. It really is. Um, and then I would like to make a motion that we approve the uh, proposed pledge contract with the Alexander family um, pending um, schedule, potential scheduling concerns. Um, and uh, uh, let me back up. Propose the, the the uh, pledge contract um, pending that scheduling concerns are addressed regarding potential state permitting issues and potential pandemic related delays, if that's at all coherent. Do we have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Um, I'm wondering if we could amend that to indicate, fill in the date we passed the motion uh, to, uh, to approve the naming of it, and that we'd also would be the uh, plan would be the revised version of the plan. Is that a friendly amendment? The revised version being what, Doug? More specific. The revised version is the one that looks like the rail car. Okay. It friendly. is a more recent one that you got in the email. It's a friendly amendment. Yes. Okay. Uh, Duncan? Um, unless I'm missing something, that your motion doesn't include the suggested change of language with regard to the historic panels. Um, I... 
You know what? I thought that was implicit, but maybe we should make it explicit. Um, though the rest of the contract isn't really even public at this point. Um, and I need to pull that up. So can I just say yes, or do I need to be more specific? I'll try to pull that language up again. Is there a document uh, you could it. refer to? Uh, I've got it here if you want, so I can share my screen. Well, for the purpose of a motion, is there a way he could just uh, refer to a document instead of the yeah, full language? Uh, yeah, refer to the Trailhead Pledge contract updated on 12 7. Yeah, the language such as shall be changed to in paragraph three should be changed to including but not limited to the list of um, potential images um, and adding a, a, a sentence about the historical society potentially um, updating it as uh, the town um, uh, likes. Is that more or less what you had, uh, Duncan? Yes, Doug. Doug has specific language yeah. okay. um, that I that proposed, and that if that's incorporated, that's and they're and they're comfortable with it. That that I think works for for the historical society's purposes. The last sentence on it was: the historical panel exhibits may be updated or rotated over time at the discretion of the town. Yeah, and I can I can furnish this. This is all in a email from Duncan, and I can furnish it to uh, uh, Donna. Okay. Okay. So for the purpose of the motion that Donna will need, what is the motion and the second going to be? Be everything so far with that as an addition. Okay. So you're <laughs> referencing the text modifications that have been referred to in your original motion on the trailhead pet pledge. Can I suggest that we unmute Donna and just see if she's comfortable? <laughs> sure, let me unmute Donna. This is the biggest, the longest motion I think that's ever <laughs> been made on the select board. All right, I, I guess I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure I understand what you want in in the motion. Is it sufficient for it just to say that you're um you're gonna go with this contract updated as updated on twelve seven, or do I need to describe the changes that were being made, or do I need to wait till Doug sends me the thing and put in the exact wording of the new language. I think you should wait on the uh, and putting the exact wording in, but that's only on the on the panels. The other the other points were were with regard to the um, pandemic and uh, construction delays. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. And, uh, and there, there was also a, I, a question about, we were going to indicate that we were going to, it'd be the revised plans that would be the, uh, implemented. Okay. And do you have a, a date or some designation of what the revised plans are? Or is it just enough to say the, the most recent revision? You could say it's the... Uh, the revision with the appearance of the, of the St. J. and Lamoille Valley Railroad car. Okay. Okay, I, I, I guess I, I feel like I understand that. Donna, we do not pay you enough. 
<laughs> Feel free to give me a raise. So I, so I put that last statement of yours in the minutes. Everybody sure. else gets one, Donnie. You might as well get one. Okay, we have the motion on the floor. And we have the second cool, cool amount of discussion. Is there any more discussion? Actually, we've had no discussion. It's all been about the motion. <laughs> I'd like to hear the motion. <laughs> <laughs> You'll read it in a minute. Yeah, yeah. You got to vote on it to know what's in it. Oh, I see. That Nancy Pelosi said that years ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is there any other discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those uh, against? And I'm guessing, Kyle, we lost her? Oh, no. Hello? Oh, okay. Am I here? There yeah, you there you are. Sorry, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, I. Did you I. vote? Yes, I. Okay, you vote in favor. Motion passes. Is there any other business before this board? No, nope. four if, hours. We'll Sorry, stand Brian, I did have one thing. Speaking of art, um, is the is every is the crew aware of the new spray painting on the the railroad street bridge? No, I don't think so. Okay, there's new new spray paint, bright pink. Mm. And they kind of went along Railroad Street and hit some private property too. But um, I think the big public property piece or the town piece is the going up the Railroad Street Bridge uh, on the like, like when you're entering the bridge um, from town, yeah. the village. All right. Uh, thankfully, that one's already painted black. So that's a pretty quick fix. Yeah. Okay. Anyone I just else? hope these illegal artists around town don't spoil that. Did uh, did we get a picnic table or or not? From the good start. Good night. Good night. Good night. Matt. Good night. What are you talking about, picnic table? <laughs> oh, oh, from the Mingledorfs? Yeah. I. I don't believe that we did. I think it was okay. gone. Yeah, right. by the time we tried to get the vehicle figured out that would take it, it was it was gone. Okay. But thank Probably you. Probably the they was it out front? Yeah. Okay. It was kind okay. of in rough shape, but we could have, you know, made it work for a season or two. Okay. If there's no further business, we'll stand adjourned at 1052. Thank you all.